Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Spear pole, I assume that's why you're here. Probably why you clicked on the video or maybe just a loyal subscriber. Hey, how's it going everybody? I have a butia right here that is a good example of spear pole. You can, you see it right there? That's gonna pull right out. Figured this would be a good time to go ahead and talk about what I do when I have cold damage to a palm and that spear starts to rot out and needs to be taken care of. This particular butia, I don't particularly know what cold spell it was that triggered this to happen. It looked fine. And then uh, over the course of maybe a week or so, this started to dry out. We know when that happens, something bad is about to come up. When I see them start to dry out, I dose them very heavily with a copper-based fungicide. I just take it and pour it right in there. I'll come in sometimes, try and pull the branches apart to open that crown up and really let it flood down in there. This one I didn't do that with because I just, I missed it. Didn't notice that this was happening. I'm in no way shocked. This palm tree about once a year has spear pull. Don't know what the hell its problem is. I've grown many butias before. This one's just been a royal pain in my ass. I don't really know why. And these center spears here start to get that brown on them. Put it back in there for demonstrative purposes, but you see you just pull. You give it a very gentle tug and nothing happens. You're good, keep treating with the fungicide. The plant warm, plenty of light. Do not oversaturate the soil, just water it as it needs watering. Make sure there's a good amount of airflow and keep the center of the plant dry. Don't let moisture collect down in there because that's just going to lead to more issues with any bacteria and fungicide building up in there. Let's say you give it a very gentle tug and the spear pulls out. When this happens, have to do things a little bit differently. That's trash, don't need it anymore. Go ahead to the next highest brand, give it a tug, if that pulls out, okay, even more trouble. Don't want that to happen, throw it out, don't need it. Keep going around from the highest point to the lowest, give them tugs, nothing's happening, that's good. Then I come in, gently pull, wanna make sure that this crown's nice and open. Once those pull out, we'll go in, make sure things are nice and open in there. Might have to get some pliers to go in there and pull the rest of any debris out. Wanna make sure that things are nice and clean on the inside. This is when I switch off from using a copper-based fungicide to using a broad spectrum bactericide fungicide because you've got multiple things going on in here once that spear pulls out that needs to be treated. This one right here specifically is more of a preventative one. I'm just using it so you can have an example. Broad spectrum biofungicide and bactericide, but it is a preventative. So this is something to use before a problem arises, specifically for feeding to the plant. It's supposed to help build up a lot of good stuff around the roots of the plants to prevent issues from arising. But disregard that one as a brand, just any broad spectrum bacteria fungicide. Particularly when it comes to the spear pulling out because of cold damage, that's when you have to factor in that there have been probably multiple things going on between bacteria and fungus that could have caused that to happen. That spear rotting out and dying, there's decay, lets bacteria in, the bacteria wants to grow. You get that spear out of there, get it cleaned out, and then you've removed the source of the bacteria, but you still have this big open cavity in here and any bit that's left in there needs to be treated for. That's why a broad spectrum is usually a good way to go. You may have issues with bacteria and fungus in there. If all you can get your hands on is a copper-based fungicide, that will work totally fine. I would just recommend going with something that will treat both. And if you can find something that works systemically that you can apply into the crown and around the roots, usually a good way to go. Bear makes a, a three-in-one systemic that's decent. It's worked okay for me in the past. It hasn't always been perfect, but for the most part, it's been okay. Other option for treatment, good old hydrogen peroxide, not necessarily the 3% crusty bottle from the dollar store. Peroxide can be taken, poured right down into the crown of the plant, let it do its thing. I would use a new bottle if possible, because once you open, a bottle of peroxide, you've let some of the oxygen out, you're allowing gas exchange, and it's going to weaken it. Important you're using something that is as potent as possible. Let the peroxide do its thing for several minutes, and then I like to go in and rinse it out with distilled water, and I'll take a paper towel or something and bunch it up and get down in there to dry it out. Peroxide works fine, but it's a one-time thing, so it's not going to have any action after you've done the treatment. And if things aren't nice and open in there and they aren't rinsed out well, then the peroxide is doing its thing as far as killing the stuff you don't want down in there, but it's also just leaving behind all the dead stuff that it killed, which is just going to attract more bacteria and fungus to come in there and grow and eat on the stuff that you just killed. That's why it's usually a good idea to do a rinse. There have been occasions where I didn't do a rinse just because of being lazy and everything was fine, but it would probably be smart to make sure to get in there, flush that out and dry it out really well. Keeping the center dry 
is very important from this point on. Whether you're using a fungicide or broad spectrum bactericide fungicide, it's then going to be important to one, follow the directions on the package, repeat as necessary. Usually when I have spear pull, I'll retreat every week to every other week, depending on what it is that I'm using to treat the problem. Might be as little as once a month, but usually I generally find myself doing it about every one or two weeks, just until I start to see movement in there. That also depends on how severe the rotting has been. You saw when I pulled everything out, it was coming out dry. There's no moisture on any of it, so I know that there's not a lot of goopiness and nastiness going down on the inside. With that sort of circumstance, I'm not as concerned about making sure to go in and treat over and over and over again, at least not on a very rigid schedule. And since this is a palm tree that likes a good amount of light, from this point on, it's going to be getting as bright of light right down there into the center of the plant and onto the foliage as I can give it. I'm going to keep it in a location that's nice and warm with a good amount of airflow. And like I said in the beginning of the video, going to water this in a manner where the soil will stay consistently moist but not sopping wet. Something to avoid anyways with most palm trees but just feel like I should say it just to be safe in case that may have been the root of the problem. If that is the case then we'll talk about that in just a minute about whether or not the spear pull is due to something else. It's a whole different video when it's just from extreme change from maybe transplant shock or too much cold or too much heat the heat that doesn't happen as often unless it's been freshly repotted when that's the case just sticking with a broad spectrum bactericide or fungicide will normally do the trick main objective here is to keep things clean and sanitary in the middle and to get the plant to grow so every time i would water this plant from here and on it's getting a quarter strength fertilizer and uh, the next to my water, I'm gonna give it a full strength because it's been a while since it's been fertilized. If I'm having to water the plant once a week, let me back that up. If things are so warm and the lighting is so good that it's looking like the plant needs to be watered often as in once a week, then I will do a quarter strength to a half strength fertilizer for the plant. So I really wanna get movement going in there. If it's a cooler time of year, maybe you don't have grow lights, something like that, then uh, I would go ahead, do a full strength fertilizer, which I would never normally recommend on a plant that doesn't seem like it wants to grow, but you need to get some nutrients down in there because you want to tell the plant to grow because it's fighting something right here. Then from that point on, you know, whenever you're supposed to do your full strength fertilizer, I don't know what kind of fertilizer you're using. Different brands have different recommendations. I don't want to say fertilize at this frequency and whatnot. In between the intervals of whenever <laughs> your fertilizer you're using tells you to fertilize, I would add in a quarter strength just so every time you water the plant it has some nutrient some uh, minerals to take up with the water all right so now backing up to when i said if the soils had been really wet and maybe things were too hot potentially that may have been what caused the spear pull since still using a systemic and something in the middle is a good idea but that could also be an issue with a rot going off the palm tree. If you notice that there was a lot of yellowing going on with the fronds, usually starting from the older fronds, the lower fronds up to the top. If you notice any types of foul odors around the root mass, then there's a chance that there's root rot, potentially some sort of fusarium going on. When that happens, things are a little bit different. There's another step that I would recommend taking. That's to pull the entire palm tree out of its pot, get all the soil out, wash the roots out completely, check for rot, cut out any rotten roots, give those roots a soak in a uh, hydrogen peroxide or a spray would work well, then rinse them off just like the same with in there. It's not necessarily great to let the decay from peroxide sit around whatever it is you use it on for very long and repot it into a fresh potting medium that's going to have a good amount of airflow to it so that water can't just sit around in there. Drainage, very important for preventing issues with bacteria and fungus. And then for those of you that are feeling really daring, say all of these were to have pulled out and you're not sure that you're gonna be able to get a new spear to push up out of there, can go through and just cut away. Just take a saw, whatever it is you have, start cutting until you find some green in the plant. Sometimes that means going all the way down to just a little nub. If that's what you gotta do, it's what you gotta do. If you hadn't done it, maybe the plant wouldn't have come back. Things become compacted in here when a, a spear gets pulled out because pieces of the old spear usually remain. There's like a little piece of meristem that will hang out down in there and uh, that can make it difficult for the new spear to push out. So when in doubt, if you're feeling brave, just keep cutting until you see some green. And usually, like actually very quickly, you'll start to see a little bit of movement from wherever the top of that cut was. It's the way to go with things that tends to make people the most nervous, but it also usually has the best results. Depending on the type of palm tree, some palm trees are just not gonna tolerate that kind of disruption. But most of the ones that are commonly grown by people, at least here in the United States, 
that you could just like pick up from most nurseries or box stores if you have to cut away to get to the green they'll usually be okay in fact if the battery on my saw wasn't dead right now i'd probably go ahead and do that with this one yep nope, there it is that's what i do when i have spear pole on the palm trees really most plants that have the monotypical growth where everything comes up out of one center you can do about the same thing so if you have a cordelin or a dracaena and things are looking bad go back to that last step i was talking about and just cut away until you see some green banana trees same thing. It doesn't hurt to go ahead and still pour whatever it is you've been using or want to use around those cuts to get things cleaned out or use a peroxide and wash that off. But you should start to see some new growth, just some movement, like the green in the middle will just start to very gently poke up, usually within a matter of days from making those cuts. I know it sounds aggressive, but the alternative is to just have a dead plant sometimes. So, you know, why not just do what you got to do? Get it done. All right, comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. Make sure you check out the comment section. People usually have a lot to offer tips, tricks, or even just giving their own experiences with some things that they've been doing and trying to manage with their plants in some more situations. Might be able to get something from down there too. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. That's beautiful. Some nice drawn out fronds. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody keep on growing. Bye bye.